We on? Security warning. Uh, security warning. Nee, 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 nee. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Gene Flynn, but first I got to do a disclaimer, and uh, I got to talk about an email I got, which Gene wants no part of. Um, disclaimer, the opinions of host, guests, and any callers, and anyone who comments are not representative of the opinion of Mr. Singer's employer or anyone associated with Gloves Off. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Gloves Off with David Singer. Once again, we are broadcasting from the famous bunker, the bunker that nobody knows where we are because of threats made by a certain councilman in the village of Palmetto Bay. It was a harrowing experience. I had to show up at a street corner at a That's certain right. time and when this black limo picked me up with dark windows, put a hood over my head. Next thing you know, I'm here. Where am I, by the way? Um, I feel uh, like uh, I can't, Admiral Stockdale. I can't tell you. Anyway, so Gene Flynn, former mayor of Palmetto Bay for three terms. Um, so let's jump right into it. First thing we're going to talk about is the email I got from... Uh, uh, Mr. Steve Cody, who is a councilman of Palmetto Bay, and um, it is, uh, I would I would assume, we'll, we'll eventually pop the email up and a picture of Mr. S Steve Cody. Um, it says, uh, it's a um, kind of uh, ho 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 homophobic email that he sent to me and it says, I guess the answer to your question is you, Mr. Uh, is, is you singer. It's obviously you watch your little, sh watched your little show again. And at this point you said to Ed Silva, I like Dick. Um, I'm not casting aspersions. You be you girl, you be you let your freak flag fly. But given your admission you made on the show Thursday, the smart money in the uh, casino is on you. Um, and there are, uh, there are easier ways for you to come out at this rate. You're going to go for a belly buster high dive and miss the entire pool. Um, I just hope married men you're doing. I'm just hope. I just hope the married men you're doing. Okay. Have small children, but wait, you have a small child and you have a, and, and you are a small child and at least mentally and at least mentally and emotionally. Anyway, so um, that's my email this week from Steve Cody. He always sends me emails, which I kind of appreciate because they're kind of uh, bizarre. Uh, this one, Mr. Steve Cody, um, extremely, extremely, um, uh, I don't know. It's just, this is just Steve Cody. I guess it's popped up on the screen right now. Uh, I guess he has an issue with uh, homosexuals, um, uh, which is, kind of scary uh in today's day and age um i just don't understand it anyway um what's even more what's even scarier than that is that um as far as i know uh, mayor cunningham has a uh, um, a gay brother and she has not come out although she's read that read this email she has not come out and um said anything against uh against mr steve cody and 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 his uh his little diatribe that he sent to me Anyway, so besides that, uh, there's a picture of Steve Cody I want to show everybody. This was at the last meeting. Um, he does look ready to be uh, – um, look at the way he's dressed. He, he kind of looks like he's homeless, um, which uh, is not unusual for Mr. Steve Cody because he basically is going to be homeless really soon since uh, he hasn't paid his mortgage in eight years or his taxes or anything. So that's our friend, Mr. Steve Cody. Um bringing Palmetto Bay up one step at a time and making us look great in Palmetto Bay. Anyway, so here I am, Dave Singer with Gene Flynn. Gene didn't want to be any part of that, but he does want to talk about a bunch of stuff. We have like all kinds of stuff to cover. So I'm going to let you start it off, Gene. What, what do you want to talk about? Well, today? well, David, I think we got to leave Cody alone. He's trying to just distract you uh, with your, your, your knowledge of government, government accountability, uh, the tools that you have, um, you know, he's getting you to focus on him instead of the real downhill spiral the village is going under right now. I, I'd say I agree with that, but I don't like homophobic emails. I don't like people that are homophobic. I don't like people that are, 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 um, I understand, you that, know, but the case, best way is to, to demonstrate the fact that if he'd only spend as much time uh, reviewing the agenda as he does reviewing your emails, I think that we'd do much better. Okay. I'm concerned. A couple of bad precedents were set at the last meeting. Uh, first of all, I understand that they went back and revisited a contract, 5500 to a security company, something that was bid out 
Other people bid. You wait, know, wait, let's talk about this is from Palmetto Bay. This is so, Palmetto, okay. Bay, Palmetto Bay. We're going to be talking about Palmetto Bay this week. I thought we were going to be talking about Coconut Grove. Next week, we're going to have the mayor of Pinecrest on, Joe Cordino. Uh, he's going to talk about zoning and what they're up against uh, with uh, Day County. I'm very excited about that. Um, one more thing, if you have any emails or any questions or you want to call me, you're more than welcome to send me emails. Oh, here we go. They're telling me to look at the camera. Um, if you have any, if you have any emails and, or you want to call me or your comments or anything, just knock yourself out. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Let, let's get back. Okay. You know, we're all invested in this village. We're all concerned. And one of the things is when you put your pen to paper and you reach an agreement, and you make a contract, all parties are supposed to be bound to it. Uh, from the reports I've got, uh, the only person who really stood up for the sanctity of contract the other week was uh, Dr. Marsha Matz in District 3. And Wh Which uh, contract was that? Let's, this was a the contract they have with the security company okay. uh, that provides security. Uh, rather than pay more officers, they went and hired uh, outside security. And For what area? For the parks. Okay, so they have off-duty security. They have Instead of off-duty police officers, they've they've kind or of, more officers that are patrolling through the parks. Okay, they've kind of dumbed it down and hired a security company. Right, and uh, they wanted to get uh, they wanted to revisit the contract and get the village to throw in another fifty five hundred dollars. Which, when you say it, doesn't sound like much. Fifty five hundred a year or fifty five hundred. Fifty five hundred for the contract for okay. the year. Okay. And they said, well, part of what they were saying, from what I read in the uh, agenda packet. Um, they uh, talked about the fact that the minimum wage has been pay, uh, raised several times. But they were talking about salaries of 19 to $21 an hour there. Last time I checked, neither the $19 uh, dollars were uh, minimum wage. So my question becomes, will all that money actually go to raises? Why aren't we holding people to their contracts? And now if you're a vendor with the village of Palmetto Bay, you just saw that Palmetto Bay will go and go through a change yeah, well, order, up. any kind of change order, and yep. throw more money at. So uh, my question is, after the fiasco with the bridge and how poorly the relationship is with Miami-Dade County, what happens now if Miami-Dade County Police Department wants to reopen their contract? You know, gas, insurance, all kinds of things have gone up for the police department too. Are they going to hold them to that contract rate, or are they going to come back and say, you set a precedent, we want to review mid-year all our contracts? Well, because it goes further. Now, as a, as yeah. a, it goes, wait, wait, it goes further. As a finance person, what do you think uh, of that? Yeah, okay, thanks. It goes further than that. Number one is you have a budget. Your budgets are supposed to be based on the contracts that you sign. That's correct. Okay, so if you're going to sit that's there, why I like to have you focused on yeah. this instead of the, the, nonsense, the childish okay. nonsense. So, so, I don't want to focus you on this. I, I know, but I, I don't like. No, I, no, no. Let's just know, keep I moving. Like, okay, I wanna, whatever. I you, you know what I don't like. So so you, you have a budget. You prepare a budget at the beginning of the year, and it's supposed to it's supposed to you're, you're supposed to be able to rely on contracts. OK, so, you know, where the cash flow is going and there are there are items during the year where there are change orders and stuff like that or or you have certain issues that you can't budget for, you know, like one time only expenses. But an, an, an expense that is reoccurring on a monthly basis, you're supposed to have you're supposed to have a contract that that is based that that the budget is based on. So what they've basically done is is opened up Pandora's box now. OK, and said, OK, this contract. And it might just be this contract, but you don't know because they still opened up Pandora's box. This contract isn't 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 valid. Okay, we're going to give you more money, and it's going to completely change our budget outlook. This time, it only happens to be fifty five hundred dollars. But what happens next next year when it's five uh, fifty thousand dollars? Well, okay, what happens with comes, any construction project that comes right. on that they come back and they say we'd like to pay every single one of our employees more? And and you know when you, it gets back to the fact that when you're watching a council meeting and you see them vote on something, you should know that that vote means something. Here they go and they show how illusory some of their votes are because they went back and just threw $5,500 at that. Now I'm going to take a close look and see if any of these people involved start throwing any money into any campaigns because that'll be very interesting. On that. No, we have, well, we, we've found, we found, and I think, I hope, hopefully you're going to bring it up because you did the research that there was a, uh, there, a lot of developers, a lot of developers, OK, in the last couple of years, have thrown a lot of money at our current council or uh, what's happening right now in the village of Palmetto Bay for July 4th. OK, but mostly what concerns me is the money that's thrown at the, the council members. And there is a, there there is, according to um, uh, the charter, I believe it's in a charter. If, if a vendor sits there and gives any money to a campaign 
any man, money to a campaign at all, whether it's the mayor or the vice mayor or the council members, any money, that vendor can't do business with Palmetto Bay. Well, and we're going to have thrown to, that, and they've thrown that out the window. We're going to have to take a look at the citizens' initiatives on doing that and what standing a citizen has, because no matter what any attorney may opine, that is in the charter, and until it's stricken down by the court, it is the law of the land. It is a requirement for the village council and members of the village council to uphold, which is their oath. It's not to follow the laws that you deem uh, convenient for you to fall follow, which is what's concerning me on this. Uh, you know, what's going on is nothing seems to mean. We just had that water vote the other day. I don't know if you got that email from a better Palmetto Bay, but they just called out the council. When is enough enough on this? I mean, they have a group okay, of residents. About what, wait, they you got let You got to dumb this down. Okay. Water vote. Okay. What is the water vote? Well, there's a okay, group of homeowners that don't, that are not on city water mm -hmm. that they have tested and there's arsenic. And originally they put a hundred thousand dollars into this so-called fund for a select group of residents uh that wasn't enough so then they i think we're going to go to two hundred thousand. then they went thanks to dr marcia matson and put in two million for this but then la uh, at the last council meeting the special council meeting held tuesday night reports that i got back were that they refused to take that next step and they nullified everything they had done so i've got to sort out and everybody's got to figure out you can't sleep comfortably at night based upon any one vote this council has taken, because at any other meeting, they can pivot or they'll tell you that that's not we, what we meant. I mean, I guess another example, and then I want to move on to some different things, is, is their vote on the RTC. You know, they tell a group of people, the residents, we oppose the RTC. Then you see the resolution in writing, and it says, we oppose the RTC which is for everybody that is rapidly learning around. Mm -hmm. It's a rapid transit zoning district that they're putting along uh, US-1. And there's a lot of people that are upset about it. You know, Well, they're upset not on the RTC for the most part, but they're upset about the building, the, the, the development and buildings that are going to be within a half a mile or a mile or a half a mile of a station or I think it's a half a mile of a station or a mile of a station and a half a mile from the, the, the busway. Well, if you recall... And you've been here all along uh, when Dadeland, uh, the Dadeland, downtown Dadeland project was going on. Uh, Pinecrest got heavily involved in reaching out across their boundaries and appealing and fighting the ultimate height of those buildings. And through their effort, they actually scaled down much of the downtown Dadeland, which benefited the surrounding areas. Now the attitude seems to be, well, we're an island. Um, so but we're, we don't so, want so is, we just yeah. want us. And we're not going to care about what's across the highway. Well, you already know you have one person that came and spoke before the council and killed a uh, annexation idea that you had put up years ago that we had voted on in 2016. It narrowly lost. And uh, now they want to do it again. But there's one person that is a supporter of the mayor that doesn't want their property to be down zoned if it went into Palmetto Bay. I assume they like being in the RTC because that, that property is going to be worth a lot more money it's obviously going to pay less taxes. It's obviously doesn't have because it's an unincorporated. That was a, that was a former county. council member, right? That is correct. That was politic to get to say spoke, out of the, spoke, uh, spoke yeah. live and didn't Lobbied. disclose and is yeah. a supporter. Yeah. And obviously because it, that property now remains an unincorporated Miami-Dade, no longer pays that 6% fee on power mm -hmm. that Palmetto Bay pays. So when you look at everything, uh, increased building heights, lower taxes, lower fees, it's a no-brainer to stay over there. Plus, they've got the same Palmetto Bay police driving across US-1 up and down the street anyway. You know they're going to respond through mutual aid. So it's the best of both worlds. But, but, but the fact, of the, matter is, the, the fact of the matter is somebody once again lobbying <laughs> the, the village council uh, for, for favors, okay, um, at the – uh, 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 that, that does not benefit the, the residents. Well, and you got to wonder where the disclosure is made. Do people yeah. understand why people are saying what they're saying? You think it's for an altruistic reason, but they actually own property. So I don't think it's fair, you know, but trans, uh, transparency is dead in Palmetto Bay. You haven't seen a quality town hall meeting. You didn't see it. Uh, let's talk about transparency for a second. Okay. Because it was. Well, a, if there was there any, was a, we could talk okay, about, about it. Because it was a cow meeting. There was a cow meeting meet the other day. Um, I think somebody told me it was April. Was it April? Maybe not the other day. Maybe April or May, where there were you're allowed council comments, where you could walk up to the podium and you can you got three minutes to say how you feel, what's going on in Village Palmetto Bay, ask questions, although you never get an answer. 
um, what direction Palmetto Bay, you're basically your opinion of, of what's going on. Okay. You can also at the same time send, send, send emails, which are read on record by the village, village clerk. So there was an email sent to the village of Palmetto Bay um, that kind of said, look, look, the council is being very disrespectful to its residents. Um, and, and not only is the council being disrespectful to its residents, but the council is being disrespectful to other council members. And it, when it came for that email to be read, the mayor stopped it. Okay. I mean, stop what is basically a first amendment right in, in the village of Palmetto Bay. And the attorney had to get involved to tell the mayor, no matter what it says, okay, as long as it's not specifically addressing a certain council member and, and, and blasting a certain council member, it has to be on read, read on record. And she actually w did not want that email read. And the, the email was about the way the vice mayor, Leon Tellum, was disrespectful to both the, the residents of Palmetto Bay and her fellow council members, Mar Dr. Marsha Madsen. But since Liam is like the mayor's lapdog, okay, I'll put some colorful expression in there. Um, the mayor, mayor did not want that read in the record where when it came from a resident who had a perfect right to sit there and write an email with her observations on what was going on in council meetings. Did you watch that? There's got to be some changes made to how business is being done or not being done in the village of Palmetto Bay. And someone's going to step forward to call us out, and that'll come sooner than later. But 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 going back, did you did you see that meeting? Where yes. It, it, well, I not only saw the meeting, but we all have been aware of yeah. some claims of ageism going on against mm -hmm. and attacks. You know, they want a council that, uh, you know, they've confused the fact that people could disagree but not be disagreeable. But now you've got a total shutdown, in my opinion. You know, uh, the Iron Curtain has descended across free speech on the village council. Uh, in, and, and there's absolutely punishment met out. Remember, Maybe we should call her Mayor Poonin. That would be an insult to Putin. <laughs> to Putin. <laughs> she, she's not as bright as Putin. Is, is that what you're saying? <laughs> but uh, listen, the fact of the matter know, let, is let, everybody let's, has let's, a right to everybody has a right to listen. I had people come up when I was on a council. Absolute, even this, even I, this U.S. Supreme Court would recognize yeah, the right true. to have redress and uh, to yes. to make comment on your your government, no matter what level. So. Um, I don't know. I just, you, you, we're absolutely going, we're, we're absolutely going in the wrong direction. I mean, the, you know, when, when, when somebody sits up there and the council sits up there and they don't want to hear other people's opinions, you know that the village is going in the wrong direction. It just is. So, okay. What's the next topic? You got? Well, uh, you want, you wanted, you threw that in there. I'm not really comfortable about what? talking about it is you threw in about the bridge litigation. I didn't throw in the. I didn't even mention. I the saw bridge. it on your email that went I out. Didn't so even throw, you, I didn't even. You know that one got past the goal. Okay. You put that. In, I just have a couple comments that okay. the case is going. I did sit in, and anybody wants to sit on in these things, even though they're Zoom, you have a right. The courts are required to be open for public access, public viewing. If you want to attend via Zoom any of these hearings, you can call the judges' chambers, and and in this particular case, Bailiff Ernie will give you the Zoom. So you can attend. I attended as an observer at the last hearing. And, uh, you know, I want to see how our government's doing. And I'll tell you, um, there is a, the motion to dismiss has been finally set for hearing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be set, I think, uh, July 11th at 3.30. Uh, so anybody wants to watch can no, I want to obtain watch. that Zoom and sit in. Yeah. Be muted. You didn't watch, not not The interact. motion to dismiss, which the is. The motion to dismiss. Which was filed by the Dade but, County. Well, it was, yeah, the motion to dismiss filed by Dade County mm -hmm. against the amended complaint that was filed by Norman Wass, the, uh, the, uh, the, um, the, uh, Look, and they volunteer, have, and, and the honestly, volunteer attorney. And, you know, we spent $30,000 out the window for all these to try to uh, agree to the bridge rather than say that it goes right with the pattern of behavior on the RTC. Are you in or you're out? Well, we don't like it. We don't like it the way it's written. But when they go down there, we're all we're all insiders here. We're all well, government forget, people, the, and the people. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, when she you missed know, the most important meeting, but because she had to do a. a and I did talk to um, some members on the board yeah. and say, well, "How do you want us to vote when there's people yeah. down here in favor, and, and your government and doesn't even consider it important enough to show up? They she couldn't even faces, send a designee. Right? Yeah. They no, couldn't even send the letter. Yep. And, and, and you go down there, but you know, Norman's a great lawyer. Norman's got a tremendous uphill battle. But you know what? As I sat down and thought about this thing, and even then, what are we going to get? We'll probably just get a reboot with the same result. 
uh, if if he wins. But I what figured, does that mean? Well, you know, they might send it back for further action, and they'll take the same action they did before. It's not going to change anything in this bridge. But I figure that Norman isn't getting money. You know, maybe he didn't contribute to the right campaign. But Norman's doing this because he's an interested resident. He cares. And whether you're pro-bridge or anti-bridge, you've got to appreciate somebody of his quality stepping forward. But you know what? In watching his action on this case, in watching what he's up against, and taking in Miami-Dade County, and the lack of resources that he's been given to work with, this is going to be his victory and his victory alone if he wins. And in fact, Norman, if you're listening, if you prevail on this, I know what this will go down in history as. This will forever be known as the Great Palmetto Bay Norman Conquest. Okay, but but they have a they have a right to do what they're doing. Is there a laugh track here? No, and I didn't think it was funny. Um, they have a right. They actually have a right. They actually have a right to do what they're doing. I, I think it's going to be dismissed personally. Um, you know, it's uh, it's. Um, uh, I don't know if the I don't know if the village is supporting it or not supporting because I, I can't tell which way the winds. Well, I don't think the village I, I is know. giving support to this because it's being done by a volunteer attorney. I, I don't. I don't. And if know, we get yeah. into discovery, is Norman going to be paying for? All the discovery and cost of litigation is that going to be borne uh, uh, on the on the backs listen, of the I can't law firm? I can't of tell you. I can't tell you that. I can't, all I know is that publicly they come out and they're against the bridge, right? But privately, who knows what they're saying? Privately, they were cooking a deal, and then when people yeah. found out, they pivoted and yeah. voted against it, and then it yeah. ended up we spent all the money with the other attorneys. Now Norman's got to take it alone. It gets back to the water thing. They're pushing one direction, and when people turn their back and aren't paying attention, they vote another way on that. Then we sign contracts, and people are supposed to live up to those contracts. They know that they've got employees to pay for, and then when people aren't looking, they throw another. It's not their money, fifty five hundred dollars. Yeah. Toward I'd the love contract. to know how much. And I wonder yeah. who watching that now is going to say, I want to get my 5500 or my 55000 or my half a million dollars that I otherwise would lose in this bad economy right now to come back and, and, and ask the taxpayers to reach deeper into their pockets and make their contracts whole. So, you know, that's that's a big problem. Now, let's talk about wait, something wait, wait, that's near to your let's heart. Because I can't, I can't ever figure out what side of the fence – the administration's on because the because the mayor whoa, whoa, whoa. always David, constantly David, David. Let's, let's always constantly sits there and tries to ride both sides of the fence. Can, I can do you not envy administration in this case. I'm not talking about administration. They got to be about, on pins and needles, not knowing which direction. Remember, there was a meeting back and a uh, a conflict resolution in regards to the traffic circle 174. The smart money was that the next day there was going to be a stipulation done to move forward on the traffic circle. And instead, that blew up and we're in litigation and that litigation hasn't even moved either. But, you know, with the village well, attorney, none, none the village yeah, manager, none they never really know what their instructions are to do because it changes at the none next None of this meeting. litigation is going to go anywhere until after the election. The mayor rides a fence like she rides a mattress. OK, she's constantly working, OK, on both sides and you can't get a straight answer from her. You just can't. I I'm sorry. She she's just awful because at least, you know, you make a decision and if it's the wrong decision, then you correct yourself. That's the way I've always been in business. You know, there's a way to always sit there and change course and correct yourself after a decision is being made. But there's never a decision being made. Well, let's talk something near okay. and dear to your heart, which is the community, community center. OK, let's do it. You know, I sat down and I looked at some items here and I always want to compare because remember the, the vendetta that's yes. going on in regards to what's going on with that. That 0.9 net acres, mm -hmm. 0.9 net acres, by the way, which are buildable acres, God, right? Two, it's two, two acres. It's Point, two, yeah, yeah, yeah. two acres. It's two, nine, you bought two acres. The village two, bought two acres. 0.98 mm -hmm. net acres Correct. after right away. That's right. Which, by the way, the right which, away, which is the, by the way, the right away didn't have to go in. And by the way, the right away can still be used for, for roadside parking, drop yes. offs. But, but wait, let's, let's make this, wait, 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 let's, let's clear this up, okay? We bought two acres of land. They put a road in. The village put a road in to use it's a village road. Put the village could have decided okay. to not to vacate, the road in. That's right. To vacate that, that area road. and take that land entirely for themselves. Correct. And the village still could vacate That's that right. land and take that back right. for themselves. So would be so the village acres. is deciding for themselves, and then ironically, the village is upset with their own decision. When you want to look at the village as a 
global legislative body, irrespective of who's making the decisions at one time or another. Because again, back, getting back to what I said a few minutes ago, uh, decisions are very fluid there and they're often brought mm. back or changed. Or as I said, a statement of we object to the RTC becomes in writing. We object to the RTC in its present as it's presently written, which has got to be, you know, that's the only thing that separates us from the animals, except for the weasels are those weasel words. So going back, the uh, okay, that you got a little chuckle out of me. That, that, that was but, a good but one. yeah, that was okay. Norman Conquest, come on, man, that was good. That, that was you know, I, I just you know, your sense of humor just is not as good as mine. Well, I got to find something to laugh about <laughs> with what's going on in this village, because again, now let's look and, okay. and let's talk about just this. real quick, real okay, quick. Go ahead. No, let's B talk about the whole bullet thing. point. This on okay. the. One of the reasons you, uh, I'm going to ask leading questions here because okay. number one, then then the answer is not going to be Steve Cody. And then I want to read some code. Because then the answer wanna, will not yeah, yeah, be yeah. Steve Cody. Uh, okay, I, wanna, so, I, I do so, want to read some of the comments. So, but so go ahead. anyway, ask going back to okay. um, the, the, the um, and remember, the answer to every one of these will not be. Steve, okay, okay, go ahead. Knock so again, out. one of the okay. reasons why you pushed forward to buying that property, adjacent, what became, what was part of it and then became adjacent to the Shores property was to prevent a charter school going in there. Correct? This is like a yes and no answer. That is correct. That's that, what they so call that leading what you're answer. So, yes, you're gonna, yes, okay. yes. so I so know the, the answer. Yes, won't... Yet, the yes or no, no answer. And I was always told in a deposition or on, on, on the stand to say I yes or no. I need someone to instruct you okay, to answer yeah, yeah, yes yeah, or no. Uh, Yes, we did not want a charter school in downtown Palmetto Bay because we did not want the increase in traffic. We didn't want the uh, uh, we didn't want the increase of park use by the charter school. We wanted to get some taxes out, which I don't think charter schools pay. There was a bevy of reasons why we did not want a charter school in in and and by the way, ninety percent of the residents from a poll didn't want a charter school too. And so I went farther than your estimate. And, really and, and so. And so, and so when you, there was even a Miami Herald article talking about that, Correct. was it worth? So, you know, that's in print. People acknowledge it. And we went even further, did we not? When we bought that property, did not the mayor at that time, who was that handsome devil? No, but did I not? instruct that there would be a covenant put on the remainder that's, of that that's, property that's correct that was our that was our idea so the remainder of the property so mm -hmm. we bought the 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 two acres or 1.97 mm -hmm. or 0.98 net however you want to do it we bought that property not only could that property now not be used for the charter school but but the remaining part by agreement would never be used for a that charter is 100 so he just couldn't shift we, let me it. tell you we we completely we had completely I mean, not you and I together because that would be illegal, but completely we had thought out um, what path we wanted to make sure there was no charter school ever in downtown. Palmetto and it has a value to the residents. Yeah, and it has a value of the residents. So then we moved on. Now, do you know of any other available properties that could serve as a charter, uh, not a charter school, that could serve as a community center? At this point? Yeah. Zero. You know, the only property I can think of, and I am not suggesting this, by the way, the I want to put that out there. Well, no, it's it's the uh, it, it, it's where the park and ride is for the uh, for the uh, IBUS uh, Express over there. If the if the uh, uh, Catholic Church wanted to give that up, the mm -hmm. parking lot which sits catty corner, because I think one of the things and what part of the brilliance of the chart of the community center location is it's close enough to have a synergy with with Village Hall parking at Village Hall and any events at Village Hall. Uh, it also could be built to be a uh, special needs shelter or just a general shelter. Uh, Listen, the fact of the matter. Okay, so the and it was also adjacent to Palmetto Bay Park, which gave us the park thing. That's right. And so and it was not immediately adjacent to any single family home. Okay, so so let, let me let me set up a little of this. Okay, because number that's one is say we had a group at we we hired an a, a group an outside group to look at different. Uh, community centers throughout Dade County. Okay, we had a um, a, a, a team of residents. Okay, that we put together to give us suggestions on the community center. Right, they went to different community centers. Blah blah blah, and and we we, we and the old village manager was an architect. He wasn't that old. Yeah, he's pretty old. He was an architect, and he designed he designed the the community center. Um, I try to help him out by saying uh set te by by giving him some ideas as far as how the community community center could be self-funded so we wouldn't have to use any taxpayer dollars so we went through and a lot of people spent a lot of time a lot of residents spent a lot of time 
on the community center and thinking what they want in there, what they don't want in there, what will benefit the residents, won't benefit, will, will, uh, will, and, and won't cost the residents money. I completely understand the residents who did not want a community center. I because, understand that too, because but they were it's completely, a majority because, rule. Because they were, they, they were terrified that it would lead to an increase in taxes, much like the residents have seen this year. You mean like what actually yeah, happened? happened this year, okay, without a community center. So the residents didn't want an increase in taxes. I understand. I don't think they had a problem with the community center. They didn't want taxes. So what we did was we came up with uh, we came up with the idea of having the community center self funded. We had some stores down in the bottom of the building which we could have leased, okay, and that would have that would have helped with the deficit of running the community center. And we also had the community center do do things for for the you know the kids uh, camps for the kids, which would have brought bring brought brought in money. It, it was really a, a good idea. The only reason they didn't like it is, oh, by the way, and we did a poll that said 65% of the residents wanted a community center. 65% of the residents wanted a community center. The only reason it didn't go anywhere is because you and I packed the community center. That that's why. Yeah, that well, that's I mean, that's true. it. It's and, just and again, spiteful. That would have had a that would have had a mm -hmm. small fee attached that? to it for anybody to use. That did you see her here? I, I hope I, that guys, was a chair. All right, now, but, now I feel like I should be in the Wizard of Oz. Hold right. <laughs> but, but going back to that, okay. the uh, let's know we we are not going to put a uh, we're not going to put a a community center in in Coral Reef Park. There's not enough parking there for what no. it is. I mean it, that park is way yeah, over the capacity. And the residents look would at kill the you. wear and tear that the uh, that the uh, the the so-called open air market or festival yeah the, the residents the, would the, the, the non, resident. non shannon melende yeah. requirement festival yeah. draws and the damage that's along there uh relative to the value the resident, it the, brings. first of all you'd have to put a parking deck okay because honestly it, it might need a parking deck now i mean if you want to build that park now you wouldn't get a permit anyway because of the the lack of parking no, that's no right. it's 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 too it's too dead you you know so palmetto bay park is a good place uh, now, when you look at the so-called renters or the apartment dwellers that would be using that location, well, first of all, they get to use Palmetto Bay Park because of their proximity as well to that. And you can't do that. You can't choose who used the thing. You, you choose where to locate it. Um, most of these apartments, including the one that was going to go up to the shores, had significant uh, amenities in there. These are luxury apartments. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were going to control the programming there. There would have been the retail there. You had the mayor who recently was touting out how great the sub shop is at the St at Palmetto Bay Station. You're all welcome very much. That was a well-planned uh, uh, place. But then she's not talking about the fact that they drove off the original plan that she voted for for that Shores property. And now what you're getting is there's going to be no mixed use. Oh, no, that's Shores there's property. There's going to be no mixed what, use. It's going to be walk up apartments. No, no, no. What was planned for the Shores property was so nice. And she even and said it was, was a great project, and, but and that's not what great, we're getting. And it was a great project. And now what we're getting is walk ups like they have in Hialeah. Well, no, I'm not, not going to, I'm not going to be, you know, I don't want to be. It, I don't it, like nothing, code Wait, wait, wait. Words, yeah, but it's not, it doesn't have the bells and whistles. Would you yeah. agree with that? I you would agree plain, that it's walk up apartments. Walk I would agree that it's not mixed use. You can talk about it. No bells and wishes. You can talk about the fact that it has some live work. Uh, features to it. However, yeah. under state law passed a couple years back, you know, you can run a great many businesses out of your house now due to the state law that the that preempted a lot of the local zoning rules. And and nobody on this council ever opposed it or even discusses that. So you can run most businesses uh, out of your home now. And uh, there are some limitations on it, but it's it's not, you're not really limited in doing it. It's just the way you have to do it to get away with it. So, wait, wait, so, I, so let's talk about, let's talk about so, the Shores. So the community center. Yeah. So you want to go, you want to go Shores or you want to go community center? Well, what I want to talk about now, I want to go back to the Shores okay. is, you know, we get back to this vendetta against the 0.98 acres. So what can you build on 0.98 acres? Well, that's your buildable land. That is yeah. your net acreage. Am I correct, Mr. Yeah, developer? You can, actually, you can actually build a, a medical building with no parking. Yeah, and let's go through that because okay. on January 13th, 2020, <laughs> The council that was led by Mayor Cunningham passed, uh, approved the Frangio Medical Offices LLC. Now, that application was for a 0.95 acre. Then that was cobbled together, four folios of those small one-story uh, houses there along Frangio and along 183rd. Um, and there were four properties that apparently, if I look and read things correctly, Two were bought on June 27th of 2019 for 950000 Too, too much, Too much minutiae. 
Well, but okay. that's okay. But, you know, saying, but, but, that's but, you okay, know, but, but basically the total yeah. on this is it basically looks like that the, the four properties were purchased for about uh, $3.9 million, if I'm correct. Okay. So that's, that's, that's 4 million. Okay. How many so acres? About 4 million. So how much was paid for our net acreage at the, uh, uh, where th the community th centers. three, but we didn't get net acreage. What we got was two acres for three million dollars. Right, and the choice okay. was made to 1. dedicate 5. some that's of that right. for right away, and we could have dedicated zero of that for that's right away. And Am we I correct this or not? That's one hundred percent correct. So, and, and we have vacated right yeah. away in the village, haven't we? Yes. So anyway, going back to that, so the application came back for that. So on the Franjo area, they're building now. Everybody says, well, we want a community centers. You know, it had to be about 25,000 square feet or 30,000 square feet. Isn't that correct for the community center? Yeah, it was going to be bigger. Maybe even 50. It was going to be back because it was going to be structured. So if you're going to put 50,000 square feet, can you put it there on the acreage next to the shores? Well, and, and, and can you do what you want with your, with your, uh, with your, um, uh, your retail down on the yes. bottom floor, your mixed use? Well, the answer is yes, because let's look at what this council voted for and approved at the Franjo Medical Office. By the way, the Frano, Franjo Medical Offices that has no parking and and a, a, a lack you're, of parking. You're, you're, you're lack getting of parking. ahead of me here. Okay, because, okay. Because that, that's, that's... After this, we're going to read some questions. But anyway, going back, okay. that so everybody knows in comparing whether a community center would work on that buildable nine point, uh, nine eight acre, uh, on this 0.95 acre, they approved... Um, 72,402 square feet of, of mixed use medical there. It, it actually, when you talk about things, remember when I was mayor, um, we had, you had to have a hardship variance. You did not have a general variance. Okay. You, the a hardship variance for those that don't remember only permits you to build to code. If you have something non-conforming with your property, it doesn't give you any rights above anybody else around you. It only allowed you if you had an odd shaped property or something to go ahead and build what everybody else had. You had certainty. But in April of 2019, the, the under Mayor Cunningham was passed a general variance standard where you can add floors, you can add density. And in this case, there was a parking variance granted. And I want to talk about under the previous code, 196 parking spaces were required for that project. And then what they did is they took a 39 parking spaces out under space reduction entitlement due to a 20% shared parking reduction, whatever that means. So apparently they're moving around parking. They're going to park next door. Maybe they're going to park on the right of way. I don't know. But you know, maybe they're going to park on Franchise that doesn't have the parking. Park that, on Franjo. Franjo that doesn't have the parking that 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 was. And was then to be there were another. The, the, so the final parking required. Again, it started off under the code that they wanted to change. See, this is the thing. They didn't like the code that was passed that Mayor Cunningham voted for as council member, along with me, that would have required 196 parking spaces under her and using the variance that was passed under her leadership or lack of. Uh, final parking required was 102 parking spaces. So there are 90 spaces, 95 spaces off. That's Basically, a lot of spaces. That's a lot of spaces. That's, that's half, a lot. That's of, half of the spaces so, that they're so required. So you, you kind of look at it. Everything's going in reverse order. You would think if you're requiring more square footage, you're going to add more parking, mm -hmm. don't you? Yes. But instead, the delta is going in, in inversely. Well, well there. why don't you? Why don't you? Why don't you? I mean, the developer who I happen to like, he's a nice guy. Okay. Palmetto Bay resident. Oh, Palmetto Wants to Bay. to bring value what, what, to yes, the right. Bill. Number one, why don't you look at who he donated campaign money to? I don't know. Who did he donate campaign money to? Well, he money definitely to? Damn, can, can, uh, donated campaign money to Vice Mayor Liam Tellum. That's interesting. Okay. I mean, you, you know, you have to go and research this stuff. So so when they say, when they say, okay, that, you know, developers, okay, and, and once again, I'm on the record. I'm a developer. When they say that, you know, the de developers get get their way. It, it, a lot of times it, it's because they make campaign contributions to people that, you know, remember that stuff. Now, let's just go back again. Franjo Road, little Franjo Road. We don't want to become a, 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 a you know, that is a building height of five stories, mm -hmm. 68 feet from ground to roof, according to those documents. That's 67 percent lot coverage. Now, six percent of that is for public open space. Uh, and 15 of that is for private open space, all of which are below what the code requires mm -hmm. for that area. So Look, the, the had, building, the that building, building would, would not okay, have been permitted. Let's just make it, let's that just, building yeah. was not permitted yeah. under the code that existed that uh -huh. was voted on and in not, 2015, and, and it wouldn't have been able to be passed except for 
the variance procedure that was put in place in April or on or about April. Of okay, so let's just let's just cut it, cut it, say it cut and dry. The fact of the matter is, well, the, the variance the procedure the monetizes. The, the, develop, the developer got away with murder, okay, because of his relationships. Well, and then you look at this and you say, when you look at what they did for the Frangio Medical Offices, which are for private business, it may add value mm -hmm. to the area, may bring medical to the area. I think, and I think you agree with me, that a community center brings much more value to the area. And we could certainly build that area on Frangio Road, uh, uh, the community center, without the parking variance. And we could certainly put it there. But there's no vision and no intent to do anything unless the right people ask for it to be done. And remember, when we're talking about the community center, there was also a group that ran a, 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 a a karate studio that were big supporters of the mayor mm -hmm. that got on Facebook yep. Live and said we were trying to put them out of business uh, through the community and center. And they're not here anymore. They folded their yep, business, business and moved correct. out. There was uh, another resident that was against it. We even put her on the committee. Uh, she decided for everybody that this wasn't going to happen. She's long since moved to the great northeast, oh, out that. of state. Yeah. Uh, and then you have another one. No, but the committee was really good committee, Then you though. had another supporter yeah. was not on the committee that didn't want a community center, felt it was too close to his business that provided for birthday events. And uh, so you had a lot of non-disclosed conflicts in there. And who lost? The residents, residents lost. lost. And is there any vision for this property? No, they just want to continue to use it for a political football. I say it's time to really start planning this thing. I think it's time if you don't want a community center, then lay your cards on the table, sell the property back like you could have. Oh yeah, no, the the, the developer, the developer sure his property was going to buy the property back. Yes, and, and he the did people, want his rights. And, and the he people did want that, his rights to the yeah, uh, right. charter school. And, and what's interesting, but you took it away from them. Is they is they sat there, they sat there and 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 blamed us for or blamed certain people for for buying the community that that property where the community center Beautiful was going to go okay but when it came to and said it was a waste of money but when it came to sell it back they refused to sell it back because they knew because okay, the mayor it voted was important to hold that property that's right. to keep it away from a charter school and because they know that this community wants a charter uh, a community center uh, and i documented even back during the stanzig administration and with uh, then joan lindsay they talked about that that general area needed a community center. So, you well, know, whatever. this it's was going to be okay. a project. Let's go to, let's go to some emails. Okay. Can you guys start the, at the top? Yeah. I have Sadeen here who, who's is his last week. He's going, he's going to uh, Nicaragua. Okay. Maybe not wherever you're going <laughs> for three months to get braces. Okay. So what do we got here? Um, okay. Carol Vega, who's watching. Hi, Carol. How you doing? Says exactly Exactly, Gene. Um, Kelly Willis says Steve Cody accused me of being being David. Then that's a horrible. Yeah, accusation. I know. I, I wouldn't want to be accused of being me. Then he blocked me. Steve is a weird dude. Um, Jill says good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, Jill. Um, Patrick Deary says how can Cody sp spew uh, dispo, whatever that means. Um, Get some glasses, will you? Let me. I know. I'm you, trying. Sir. Okay. Uh, Patrick Despicable says, messages to residents on village email address. Uh, oh, you're actually isn't watching. our vice mayor an attorney? Yes, our vice mayor is um, an attorney. An attorney who's lost two jobs in the last year. Now, Next. Patrick Deere, I do want to address that. That yes, people closer to the community center would obviously get a disproportionate chance, but nobody wants. You know, Keep community going centers are a lot like. Uh, fire stations Listen, I, people I have, want them no I, I closer than three blocks I, but no respect, more than a mile i away respect from people who didn't want the community no, center that, because the, everybody has a right to their own opinion the fact of the matter is 65 percent of the residents wanted a community center okay because i just want to point out that that and and cutler bay had a better opportunity because they were able to find a total contiguous piece of land to do it on yeah. but if you really look at their plan for their community center and their town hall it's it's almost like the Palmetto Bay plan that when you put together Palmetto Bay Park, the community center adjacent to the Shores property, mm -hmm. adjacent to Village Hall, except for we would have some residential as part of that as well. It, it's okay. Wait. Using our you gotta let me you gotta let me read the rest of these comments. You gotta you gotta you gotta let me get into these comments, and then you can you can go on and and talk. it says uh, Patrick says uh, terrified that it would be almost exclusive use by renters surrounding the center. You know, I, I can I can understand that, but that's, unfortunately, that's a valid point. but but unfortunately, the, believe it or not, renters are still are still People are still too. residents of Palmetto Bay. And what's really interesting is at least the renters somewhat pay taxes, where you have a council member who doesn't to the village of Palmetto all Bay. Right, right. Okay, yeah. so next one is Christy Lee, <laughs> the walking path 
has been dis- uh, destroyed there and the garbage everywhere. I, I would assume that that's, uh, you know, uh, around the area of the community center. And, and that was a lot of money put in for the joy of the residents so they could jog off the roads. It was a it was a pathway that was much more forgiving to those that are walking. We have a lawsuit pending from somebody that mm-hmm. tripped and fell there. Uh, due to lack of maintenance, or at least that's what they allege. Okay, and I agree that I, I'm going to keep going. Uh, the uh, so Carol Carol also writes these so-called luxury apartments are parking on the swales. Well, Carol, we all I voted first we all, of all, we all none of that. those apartments. You know, the ones I voted, I voted hard against the one on 174th Street. Uh, I know that a Circle member who David keeps ma- naming was on the Michael. <laughs> Miller's show and claimed that uh, Cunningham voted against it when she was on the council. Can, Cunningham, further wait, wait. She truth. has not voted against one apartment development. I voted okay, against not it. One, fact, not only did I not, vote against she, it, I advocated strongly against it. It was a Herald article. Check the facts yeah, on that. She is so... Wait, forget and that. She everything is, I warned about has come yeah, true yeah, on that property. She is so pro-development. And she, she tries to get people... To, to believe that she's not pro development, she's the most pro development person on the council. And when have we ever? When has any neighboring city ever turned over a street to a developer? Forget for the year. I know. But when have they ever turned oh, it over? You know, crazy. they passed a resolution later on under under then interim manager Truett that allowed them that authorized the manager to give back the impact fee monies to the private developer who was then going to develop the street. Uh, it, no, that's I wonder weird. what kind of oversight there was going to be on that. But I haven't seen. Was there any sort of follow-up resolution? Was that done? Were there reports on that? Did that fall by the wayside? Uh, uh, once that project is done, are they going to give them back? Um, well, you need a sta- you need a staging area, but they should be paying for the staging area. Well, they should be paying. For they the should be paying area. for the staging. All, all developers pay for staging areas. But Jill okay. Steinberg raises a big point can, there. Yeah, can we talk about the maintenance of the sidewalks and a drainage? The drain's not being uh, maintained. Now, let me just interrupt you there because that's what people want. They want to hear from me, not you. No, but seriously, okay. there was a it's report okay, done recently on the, I'll let you. I'll just let you go on your tangent. All right. There was a report done recently under the guise of, of connectivity in the village uh, in regards to more mega sidewalks in the village of Palmetto Bay. Doing one down Coral Reef and one – are we going to do it down 144? Are we going to do it down 152, 168, or 184? And that morphed quite a bit. And actually, that was a really eye-opening uh, report when it came in. And it really detailed some of our problems. And a lot. And th- this obviously was done well after I left office, but it really opened the eyes to some of the inefficiencies there. So in my opinion, that report no longer became a report for where we should be putting the uh, mega sidewalks, or the shared paths, they call them. And, um, no more mega sidewalks. But please. But... No, no more. That report bike, really, what that report really bike, says. You want to put in bike lanes? Put in bike lanes. But you don't need a 10-foot sidewalk. But the problem is that report really became a lawyer's dream insofar as narrowing out and identifying those areas where people were at risk. And once I read that report, I'm like, no more new construction. We need to take that money. And it needs to go in addressing exactly what Jill Steinberg talks about. You know, we've had a lawsuit that was recently settled by a realtor that was riding down 82nd Avenue. Her bicycle on a sidewalk, which is part of the reason why bicycles shouldn't be on the sidewalk. But she hit uh, some bad sections, fell and injured herself. That lawsuit was settled, not dismissed. Mm -hmm. So I assume money exchanged hands. We don't know because they haven't really talked about that in public but the drains why weren't the drains clean this year in fact david didn't you have some information that they were not going to fund the uh drain cleaning company that they were going to go out and buy their own truck yes they, they want to do everything in-house so but then which is they, actually a disaster but then didn't we do everything in-house with you know this is kind of like a constant churning didn't we do everything in-house we brought in all the lawn maintenance and everything in-house yeah. in the and, parts, then we, and then we and then yeah. we, we outsourced yeah. again but we didn't get rid of any of the extra employees we hired to take care of the the parks now we have additional employees in the terms of outsourcing so now we're going to have more employees finish hired. the rest of this it says from from jill it says the drains by the american legion were not maintained and we had uh we we had a flood by the legion during the tropical weather two weeks ago didn't don't we, doubt that didn't we have a uh, a a video put out by the mayor talking about how we escaped any problems from this and we didn't have no we have problems we have plenty of problems but and and then Listen, she mo- and then she mocked cutler bay didn't she yeah yeah she she mocked cutler bay i'm trying to throw you some soft no, no it's okay it's easy she she gave tim 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 mayor tim you know a hard time about it um i i mean it's just it, it's it's really it's really sad number one when she goes after other commissioners like she has dade county commissioners because she's gone after them that's why her relationship with 
with Dade County is just so wonderful, right? And then she goes after neighboring mayors. I mean, mocking, m m mocking neighboring mayors. Um, you know, I think they did a real, I think they did a, I think they had a problem because they got 26 inches of rain in, in Cutler Bay. But I think that he was out there. Um, you had Cobb out there. You had uh, Higgins out there. I, I think they did a good job trying to alleviate some of the stress of the residents. Well, um, and for Palmetto Bay, I really think that rainstorm was a huge opportunity and it should have been documented. And I haven't heard of anything being documented. You know, a flood is basically how, you know, is the entirety of the street covered? How long is it covered for? Did any homes get water in it? And quite frankly, what I think that day showed, Palmetto Bay had several year head start on Cutler Bay with our stormwater program that we put in place when under the original council that I was fortunate to be of. And we saw that rainstorm that it's worked, that all the millions of dollars that we have put in over the last 20 years has worked. And that's been a job well, well done. Not, but if you not, don't clean the drains, that's right. If you don't clean the drains. Okay, so this is my deal. If you know, and, and I got to tell you something, Carol Vega, love her to death, pain in the butt. Okay. She'll say the same thing about me. She'll tell, no, tell everybody she I'm a pain. It up she, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll say I'm a pain in the butt. Pain in the butt. Her focus on all these years, email after email after email, is to say, you guys got to clean the drains. You guys have to clean the drains. You would think after all that, right? All that, and are constantly t addressing it, addressing it in council meetings, addressing it with emails and everything else. Somebody would sit there and go, oh my God, Carol's right. Maybe instead of scheduling for the drains to be cleaned once a year, we sit there and take some of the PR money we're using to make the mayor and the council look good and clean the drains because that's where our tax dollars should be going. No amount of PR money is going to cover the stink of not cleaning the drains. And, you know, it's just unfortunate no, for the but residents. I, but but, but, but let I'm me finish is, off the point. If we would have documented this with the drains that we've had in place, with the stormwater we've had in place, with the fact of how well Palmetto Bay did, you know, all this should be packaged together and to go back and not declare victory for a very minor uh, CRS rating improvement that, by the way, took years of work that started uh, when I came back in in 2014 to get. But we should go further and show that maybe we're paying a, an exorbitant amount of flood insurance needlessly when when we're really in a much better position than a lot of other areas. Remember, areas like Sweetwater actually at times have had pumps to drain mm -hmm. places out. Well, that's what Cutler we don't Bay have did. They, Cutler Bay brought in pumps. I mean, in, in, in Carl Gable, uh, uh, Coconut Grove, where my office is, they, they, the office building I'm at, they, they run in pumps too. But it takes vision. It takes paying attention yeah. to it. And no, it, it takes, takes it, focusing it ta listen, on the problems. It, how hard is it to sit there? Okay, and I do this in my shopping centers that we manage. How hard is it to schedule cleaning out the drains three times a year? That's all you got to do is have a routine. Well, it's not that difficult. Under manager Silva, we had a routine and we had uh, Pelco on contract and we had things being done and we had a code enforcement and, you know, everybody you, looking you, out and an educational problem. program of not blowing your lawn clippings into it. The basic requirements of residents, residents tax dollars, okay? Parks, police. Um, uh, cleaning out drains, right? Roadways These are, are not what? are not being met. They, they would rather sit there and focus on something like a party or a July Fourth or something like or 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 a movie night in bread and circuses. Or, or, yeah, it's just it's just ridiculous. They're not sitting there. They have no clue to how to run a city because the basic needs are not being met in Palmetto Bay what people pay their what people expect their tax dollars to go well and jill steinberg brings up a point about that app everybody let's use the app well first of all we've always remember when you were there you wanted to have somebody available by phone on the weekend that's right we created under me the duty phone where 24 7 somebody had the duty phone and after hours you could reach a live person mm -hmm. i don't even know if they have the program going anymore but i remember on my blog a couple times you know just to promote it out i'd put out this weekend the clerk's going to have it some weekends the director of public works would have it you and, should and, have a you and should we have had some a sort of duty staff. phone That's right. to where there was accountability who am i speaking to an app is a big black hole where things go into it's a deflection it's 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 somebody that gets excited about a new play toy. Somebody has sold you. It's like the music man out there. They've sold them this new app. It's the lack. It's the 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 total 
deflection and the removal no, of, a, I, of, I tried, of personal I, I service here in the I, village I of Palmetto Bay. Personal service would be an employee that ha answers the phone 24 hours a day and knows where to take that phone and what director that should get that phone call. And, you know, Jill, you're absolutely right. I agree with you. There needs to be someone you call, someone that's going to tell you what's going to be due. And then when it, there's no follow-up, you can say, but I spoke to on this next date. Next. Yes, right. Because with an app, it's easy. Where on our website can you go and see how many people put in for that app? How long does it take to clear a problem? Are they even done? Or does it just go into the big black hole of not my responsibility? Yeah, and, and, and make excuses. An app is a perfect way to make excuses on not following up with a problem in Palmetto Bay. It's like the music man in this village. As I said, everybody wants his next great thing. So long as I don't have to be bothered with it. You know, I've got my office hours. Well, you know what? When I was mayor, I didn't have office hours. You know why? Because I didn't limit myself to office hours. You needed to meet with me. You needed to call me. It was done. I didn't say, well, you know, office hours are on Friday from two to four. No, it's 24 seven. You know, I mean, there well, were times we I took a, a Maybe we should take a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I prefer substance. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so what do we got? What else do we got? Well, the community center, again, I realize that not everybody's a big fan of the community center, but even those that don't want a community center have to realize the waste of just the holding costs of that property. Uh, well, you know, and, and the lack of vision of what's going on when you say, you know, there used to be state of the villages where we talked about the success of the last year or challenges ahead, as well as the vision for the future. It's become a big mm -hmm. party and distraction, bread and circuses. What's the vision? You look back at the, uh, the, uh, strategic plan that was filed in 2019 since 2019, what's been completed on it. One of the major things that the people who voted for it in 2019, which, by the way, it was approved after I left office, uh, was the completion of Park Road. Well, what's happened to that? Has anybody seen? Why did we even bother put asphalt down for an incomplete road? Why did they even go forward on the road? Oh, I know what part of the problem was. They couldn't get the right of way from uh, the hospital. Nicholas Hospital mm -hmm. there. And when they did an appraisal for that right of way, it came down darn near close, if not even more than, than what, what bought, the yeah. village of Palmetto Bay paid for the, the two acres, yes. including the right of way mm -hmm. and the, the, uh, the one acre that can build yeah, the, a the, the one, better the than people, a 72,000 square wait, wait, foot the, building. The, okay. I'm not going to mention any names, but the person that's complaining about buying that land. Okay. And says we paid $500,000 to it is the same individual on the council. Okay. Who hasn't paid his taxes, hasn't paid his mortgage, has lost his license to practice law. OK, who 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 lives and feeds off the system. OK, he's got no right to be sitting there throwing disparities at people because he's not even in the business. He has no clue. We have three. There were three appraisals done. So so the three appraisals were wrong. OK, but he was right. Yeah, I do. You you okay. do need evidence to move forward on something. And if they think they paid a half million too much then where is the evidence for that? Where is Well, the apparently they don't think they paid a half a million because they were brought uh, this, this last meeting a couple of days ago, they were going to go after the bonding company and four out of the five or what? Three out of the, were, were four people or five no, three people? out of the five. Th I think, th I think the vice mayor was three all out of the five voted against it because the they realized that what's going to happen is they're going to make disparaging remarks and they're going to turn around and get sued by one of the best attorneys in Dade County and the, and the ex and the ex village manager. And, and the mayor even said that when this comes out to be a non-issue, okay, we're going to get sued. The village is going to get sued. Oh, which, they were being set okay, up for that. Which they is, know that. They they got word as to what was circling around okay. to come back at them. You know, Newton's law of uh, litigation yeah. for every action is. And I got to tell you something. I'm still not. I'm still not sure that the the, the ex village manager or or the attorney, okay, shouldn't sue the village because the village has no off. Uh, wait, uh, time's running out. Okay, has no, it's any not running out. It is not running out. Run you out. control the means of has production. Any, here, has any clue? Any clue at all to the valuation of land? Jill, the, the, Jill I want to talk about Jill. What she's okay. saying out here. If you look at it again, she talks about the drain. You know, she lives in the landings. I'm going to expose mm -hmm. where she lives. Oh, that, that is one of my um, proudest areas. Uh, proudest? We really stepped into there. And I remember, I think it was in June of the first year we were incorporated, there was a heavy rainstorm. 
there you could only get a fire truck down that street there were jill do you remember that if you can type quickly in there there were cars that were actually flooded up to there you know that were ruined because of the flood that was in there and then working with then ron williams in our public uh, works department that street was totally redone with curbing uh, uh, traffic calming, uh, updated sidewalks. I mean, that I, I really love the money that was put in there. It's a tremendous success story in there. Uh, and then when we did some of the drainage, it flowed out directly to the canal. And because of that, there were environmental concerns. And we addressed those concerns. And the proper filtration was put in for that. So we just didn't dump oil water into the, uh, in, into the canal. So environmentally, and we improved that area. I think we brought great value. But Jill, just like you said, it's only as good as you maintain it. Oh, I got uh, somebody's knocking on my door. Oh, that must okay, be guys, that dark limo you they're had tell to me, They're going to tell me to. They're going to tell my... me to get off. Okay, everybody, uh, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming by. You're invited anytime you want. We will. Um, we will. We will catch you guys next week. Don't forget, Joe Cordino is going to be on. We're going to be talking about uh, Pinecrest and uh, the BRT and any kind of zoning. Yeah, so, by the way, you know, now we're going to get with the RTZ. They told us we didn't have enough enough uh, 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 ridership. Yeah. So we had to get the BRT. So we're getting the worst of both. We're getting the uh, density thrown down our throats, but they're not giving us the rail to handle the density. We're getting BRT that's going to be overwhelmed if it's successful at all before it even begins. And I can't so wait you can for those it. gates to go down. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Uh, stay healthy. Um, stay safe. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Don't forget, we're talking about Pinecrest next week. So you know anybody who lives in Pinecrest, please tell them to tune and in. Jill, thank you for and thank commenting. You. And, and thanks, worry. everybody, for we're commenting. We're going to find actually. somebody that's going to come and clean your drains. There you go. And thanks, everybody, for commenting. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. And we're clear.